Jonathan Kidd. Um, yes, it, it doesn't fill me with great joy, this, uh, this whole um, This Is Your Life experience, because the, um, the program itself was uh, um, full of sort of very, I don't know how you put it now, is a, um, a, but minor celebs, non-celebs, in a way that uh, and my father's life didn't actually merit. In fact, he really should have, they should have done his life about you know, 10 years before now doing Crane or something where he was being watched by 20 million people um, and he would then have had a very rich seam of, uh, um, of, of actors to talk about from his film career because when this was done he wasn't making as many films because his film film career the, he made up for 200 films but most of them were in the uh, from 1945 onwards I mean they did get the the main actors they got into this this is your life were um, Patrick Allen and Gerald Flood from Crane Crane was um, uh, a rediffusion series. They did three series, I think that's 39 episodes, in 1962-63. There should have been a, a galaxy of stars, even in 73. I mean, in, in 63 there would have been a different lot, but they still, he'd been doing masses of sitcoms and masses of, of tellies. And to end up with this bizarrely assembled group of mostly prisoners of war, because he had, of course, written a book uh, uh, on being a prisoner of war. Um, he was in prison of war for five years. He was captured at Calais, which became Dunkirk in 1939 because he'd been a territorial. And he wrote a book about his, his experiences, um, which was called For You, The War Is Over, which was out in that year. So obviously the connection was made with the, with the book. And uh, that was why they pushed forward with the, the, the POWs. Because it had been kept and it was, it was shown because Richard Gordon um, told Eamon where to go, um, it ended up being stuck on, they were thinking of it as in terms of a show, Let's, it'll go after this or during this, and the last minute they went, oh, put Sam's on. I, I, I actually watched not knowing, obviously it was going to be on, and, uh, and actually had to call to my mother, call up my mother and say, it's, it's, dad, dad's, daddy's show's on now, quick, quick, come in, come in, because I saw the Richard Gordon thing. If it hadn't been for the fact I was watching This Is Your Life in front of the telly, that, that we'd, we'd never have seen it because it wasn't repeated. And, um, and it was just the fact I was watching Richard Gordon disappear and suddenly, there's my dad's. I suppose I was, I was excited by the, the, the pickup thing because he was, a, a, was off at um, race course and it was kind of, you know, yes, it's worked. Yes, we're going. Oh, let's get down there. It's worked. We've picked him up and he hasn't thrown a wobbly. It, it, yeah, he, he, he sort of went along with it, I remember, to kind of sort of, oh, oh good, all right. Oh, yeah, come on then, you know, oh, pleased. Um, but that was, he, he was very self-effacing like that anyway. I, mean, I invented my own line, which was, um, that's me there, that, with a, a suitably, uh, a suitably groovy haircut of the era. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I've you know, got my own line, I said my own line, which was, you know, he was, he was really sporty. But I, I remember thinking, I've got to fit this in, because there's no reference to Chelsea at all. And he supported Chelsea since the 30s, when he was living in Shepherd's Bush. So, you know, as a, as, a, as a teenager when he came over. So it was a big thing in his life, so to have no mention of it. So I actually f thought, I'm going to say something. So I said, oh, he could have been another Peter was good if he, because he had a trial for Queen's Park Rangers. He was a good footballer. I wanted to get in the fact that he was a decent sportsman, and, and which I felt there were certain areas in it that, that were out of, completely out of our control. Well, my mother had been involved in it, and I think she'd just been buffeted by what the researcher said. Her big thing was, she kept saying to me, oh no, they're not available, he's not available. And what I think that meant was, was somebody had said, oh no, he's on another show, or, or we've had him recently. I think that was something that was also said. Uh, who have we got? Here, this is Bill Gollidge here. This is Bill. You know, first person on after me. I'm on first. I think I'm with my mum, I suppose. My mum's there already, isn't she? Yeah. I'm on. Bill Gollidge. You know, sweet bloke. Army man. Prisoner of war together. Great. Good stuff. You know, lovely. Um, followed by... The Reverend Carver, with a few kind of words to say, he was just a, you know, I think he's the Reverend, he was the Reverend of Sloan Square or something. Why? Why was he on it? Anyway, so the third one on, we haven't had a single star yet. Freddie Foster. I mean, great. Freddie, lovely. Mayor of Grantham. You know, but once again, another, another POW. But the next person on, recognise that face. It's Dickie Davis. Dickie Davis, another POW. So we've had Basil Carver and three POWs from the beginning, and me. The people must be turning off in droves, thinking, who are these people? Well, they got Jim Laker on, 
who made a derogatory remark in, in his, because there was always a play on, a voice. They, they record something and they, you know, like, uh, and I think he said something like, as a cricketer, Sam had no idea. And I actually complained at the time because they were playing it out. And I said, excuse me, um, my father played cricket at Lords. He played for the stage cricket club. He was okay. Can we not have this derogatory remark? So he changed it because I complained on the day. The next person, Jack Warner, which is fair enough. Jack, big, big pal in the uh, first film he ever made, 1946, Captive Heart. Jack's there, mates then, mates from then on, in every series of Dixon and Doc Green, in the same way they're excited, every series of sites, in one episode each time. But in in, in um, Dixon and Doc Green, it was a Saturday night show, and a big, he's always playing the, the, um, the, uh, uh, the thief with a heart of gold. He always played that character, because that's what he was like, he was a, he, he was a sweet man. And then, then, to be fair, Beryl Reed, but wasn't a mate. They'd been in uh, Killing of Sister George. But obviously he got on well with her when he knew her, but you know, you can you see from you can see from his his body language there, it's almost like, you know, you're a you're a mate but you're not quite a mate. You know, it, 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 that was because I think they'd run out of people. I think they'd done the four three POWs and Basil Carver. And and interesting the bloke the bloke who was the um I've we've got to I think the, the the bloke who was the school friend who nobody knew. And my dad said to me, you know, never seen him before in my life. He's, he's not even in the book. So, because uh, he was edited out. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, Patrick and Gerald, who were um, big mates. And then finally, we go down to, yes, Rodney Bashford, that's right. He was the, um, with the band for the end. You know, that's, how many is that? So it's five POWs and Basil Carver and Beryl Reed, Jim Laker, Jack Warner, the Green Boys. It's not, you know, it's not a great show. I think he was very pleased to be on the, very proud to be on the programme. But you know, he should have been on the programme. I remember frequently saying, why aren't you on This Is Your Life? This is absurd. Because um, he was so popular. But I just think perhaps the timing was wrong. Perhaps it ought to have been, uh, um, ought to have been the BBC one. I felt a little bit um, uh, that he was sort of second best with it that it was a kind of afterthought, we'll get Sam's on. It, it must have been a dis disappointment for some of his fans watching, because, well, I suppose that some of them might have loved it because of the connection, the POW connection, and the fact that he um, he did such good work during the war. But it, 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 to take that angle, I think it just, it meant that from, a, from them doing a show, it, it didn't have a great status because there weren't stars. It became like a, I suppose you could say that it had an angle on him that was um, one that you wouldn't have expected. The, the, the hey, look, he's got a different layer to him than you thought, which would sort of make sense. I think he was proud to be, in the, to be on it. But he, if you, uh, I remember him being, if you look at even the pictures, the stills, there's a kind of humbleness about him, which he had. He had a, he had a very great, humble character. Uh, but I know I felt consequently that it was all a bit second best, you know. It was all a bit, oops, what have we got? Oh, we got Sam to get that on. But no, I, I, we were still disappointed. We were disappointed that the, the calibre, there were, there were too many people.